top six members sent a message of, un of a united front in a special press briefing held in Johannesburg yesterday. The briefing was called to iron out incidents which have caused confusion within the organization and the public. In this short address to the media, ANC Secretary General Gwenda Mandashe assured the public of the leadership's unity and cohesion. Treasurer General Matthew Posa is here to talk to us about the, media, the press briefing yesterday. Good morning to you. Welcome. Good morning. Thank, Thank you for, for joining us. Thank yes, you. thanks for joining us this morning. Why was it important for, for the top six to be there together yesterday? Usually you have the SG communicating after the NWC or the NEC. But we just felt, you know, we need to stand behind him and uh, speak in one voice and expose ourselves to any questions by the media. You know, and uh, that's what happened. Yeah. Why was that necessary? Was, was, it, was there a feeling that perhaps the SG was vulnerable or exposed? or mm -hmm. Why expose yourselves in a sense? But you saw the SG was, was, was at his best yesterday. So you couldn't be, have been vulnerable. But we felt that if there were questions directed at any one of us, mm -hmm. we should be available to answer those questions. Yeah. And that is what happened. Yeah. So, uh, journalists were very pin, pinpointing about who they want to ask which question. Yeah. And we said we should respond, and we responded with courtesy and openness. Yeah. yeah. Did you feel that there was a sense that the nation is persuaded? The media was it was the media persuaded by the responses and the nature of the engagement? You, you, you see, when you look at the posters and the headlines, some people are very persuaded, others are not. But such is the nature of a democratic environment, you know. And the people who always analyze that were a, were a ruling party. Uh, we should not uh, be uh, thin-skinned about it. We should accept there will be this and that view. Yeah, mm -hmm. and currently, what is your sense? What view obtains right now? My, my sense is that uh, we have sent a very strong message of uh, unity, mm -hmm. and we, we've called upon our forces to restrain themselves against the use of disrespectful and insulting language. We made it very clear. Uh, the example which happened dramatically yesterday is when uh, MKVA um, contrary to our constitution, call for the expulsion of Mal Malema. We don't do that. Mm -hmm. And of course, the Youth League also uh, responded in kind, uh, saying that uh, they were only cooks and uh, you know, they were only saying that to please their girlfriends. It was very um, an ANC on, in, on both sides. Mm -hmm. And we use it as an example to say that uh, let's elevate our engagement mm -hmm. to something more intelligible. How have things degenerated to this level? Where did discipline go to? How did it all get to a point where uh, insults become the order of the day? Well, uh, you know, I think uh, we should uh, induct and train our cadres much better. You know, we must take responsibility and not run away and point fingers. We should say, here is a state of affairs which we don't like and, and take specific actions. And of course, uh, where people deliberately violate the Constitution, there must be consequences. Mm -hmm. My own view is that uh, for a long time there's not been consequences for many, many things happening at different levels. And we should um, look at that frankly and, and take action. Yeah. yeah. Just as, as things stand now, I mean, many of the uh, people who are leading the charge and in these ugly conversations are very senior members of the ANC who've been with the, with the ANC for a long time. So it's not just about training at this level. It's a different kind of culture that seems to be emerging within the ruling party right now. It's a wrong culture. Mm. It's contrary to the culture of uh, the history of the ANC of 100 years, which we are celebrating. And the statement is saying that we need to refocus uh, uh, cadres of the movement to the values and the principles of the movement. We saw it through the hundred years. And uh, we should not be alarmed. The discipline is a process. You keep educating and educating your members. And uh, it is disturbing quite rightly if it happens at the highest level. Mm. You'd expect the senior leaders to be very exemplary mm. and not to have uh, engaged in public spat, for example. Yeah. yeah. The public spat, is it directly linked uh, in the view of the top six of the ANC to the build-up to Mangaung? Because uh, when one thinks back to 2007 and, and the Pulukwane situation and the Pulukwane elections and, and the conference of the ANC, there was a build-up to that. There was robust engagement. There was a lot of name-calling, a lot of ugly things uh, that, that came out. Is this a reenactment of that journey? I think in the normal life of a political party, uh, especially in the ANC and even the Alliance, we've had public spats, and we did not like them, and we said so, and we called each other to order. Um, an elective conference like Mangau would be a factor that generates more heat. And we want to discourage the frenzy around Mangaung. Mm -hmm. 
and focus our cadres on the policy documents, which are now before the branches. We'd like our cadres to discuss the policy proposals, which are before, before the branches, and to make input. Mm -hmm. The Youth League, Veterans League, Women's League, they must all make robust input. And members of the public uh, should make input into our policy document. That's where we should spend our time. That's where yeah. we're going to spend three days or four days in June having a conference, a policy conference. Mm -hmm. So we're saying to the members of the NC, focus on the policy discussions. Yeah, and yet they are not. Because now, even yesterday on radio, Floyd Shivambo uh, is, uh, was heard saying that uh, they're not going to try and make sure that President Zuma doesn't get a second term in Mangaung and, and all of the things that they've been saying. So clearly there's a, there's a different kind of journey that is underway. Yes, there's a policy conference, but the, the, the eye is not on that policy conference. The eye is further ahead. Well, that eye which is further ahead is looking at the wrong things. Mm -hmm. We want to insist that all members of the ANC in branches and outside branches must discuss the policy documents. They must focus on that and that only into June. Yeah. So, so the opening of this leadership conversation is not yet done. You see, if you open that now, you will move into the policy conference with a polarized and paralyzed ANC. Mm -hmm. We don't want that. That's why we say, let's go up to October and then we can open that uh, debate. Yeah. Uh, but I, I see online that the debate is raging like wildfire, mm -hmm. which is unfortunate. But we should not respond you know, uh, to that type of thing in a pandering way. Yeah. Yeah, we should give leadership yeah. and say what it should be. Yeah. But has this horse not bolted? Is this horse not out there already? You're saying it's raging on the internet. There are reports that even in Durban, in KZN, the, the branches are already lobbying. There's already that kind of movement that is currently underway. Has the horse not bolted? No, the lobbying will, 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 will take place because people are thinking. Mm. They're entertaining themselves with the possibilities of this lineup or that lineup. Mm -hmm. You can't stop them from thinking. But we have not sent out nomination forms. Yeah. We have not asked a single branch to nominate anybody. Yeah. When that time comes, we'll send nomination forms. Then they will nominate. So the nominations at the moment are invalid. Yeah. Okay, just talk a little bit about why it's taken so long to, to begin this process of imposing and implementing discipline and ensuring a disciplined behavior within the AIDS. We are every day, there's hearings in the ANC at different levels. They don't attack the news as they do in the case of, what is the case of say, Malima. There's many, many appeals. They happen all the time. In, in every province, they can ask anybody. It's an ongoing process. But this particular one is attracting attention. Mm. Now, also, the NC Youth League wants former President Thabo Mbeki to address at least one of the league's centenary rallies. Will the ANC allow that to, to, to happen? There's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. uh, Thabo Mbeki is a member of the NC. Even when he, he stepped down as the president of the country, he says, I'll remain a member of the NC. Yeah. yeah and we respect that. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just want to address some of the questions that have been raised by some of our viewers, and uh, some of them, they've sent them on Twitter. One of them that was being asked is, why is the ANC addressing uh, this particular issue as opposed to addressing the many challenges that people face? Why is it that you see the top six coming out for, for this issue as opposed to coming out about uh, the increase in the price of petrol, electricity price increases, ETEG, and that kind of thing? W why is that the situation? Well, we're, if you follow the debate in the ANC, uh, mm -hmm. even last week, we put in the, in the public uh, eye mm -hmm. the need to accelerate service delivery. The need to, to, to talk about economic freedom and to say what it means. Yeah. Creating opportunities for people to, to, mm -hmm. to be successful yeah. and prosperous. So we're not only focusing about on this, we're focusing on, on everything. We talk about the, this massive, if, in, in massive infrastructure project. Mm -hmm. We say that will, will create jobs. So we are focusing on those things, but there's time for everything. Okay. Yeah. Luzuko Tosh, if you look at the screen here, Luzuko, Luzuko Tosh says, Dr. Matthew Posa, why is Malema still working as an ANC member but was expelled? Malema was not expelled. Luzuko should be uh, advised on the status of uh, the hearing. Mm -hmm. The hearings continue. He has appealed. So let's well all be patient and await the outcome. Okay. Where is the process now? It's a... It's, uh, it's with the NDCA, is it? Yeah, the Malema's appeal against the, the sentence that they law from the lower structure. Mm -hmm. and, with the, and then, of course, uh, that pronouncement will be made once they've assessed the facts. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, uh, the, if, if, uh, if, uh, if, if he's, I don't know, I don't want to prejudge the issues. Whatever it is, if he thinks it's adverse to him, 
he still could ask the NEC to do a review okay. in terms of the NC constitution. Okay. So it's a long destination. Okay. So he'll continue as ANC Youth League president for now? Yeah, until uh, we pronounce final on it. Okay. And then just one last question. There was one here uh, on Twitter. This one from Maurice Saidi who says, what happens when the ANC Youth League takes another scathing swipe at the ANC leadership because they surely have the urge? Well, we should discourage the urge. We should not act on urge. We mm -hmm. should reflect carefully on yes. what we say and avoid public spats. Okay. If we were to go by urges, then we will be ruled by emotions. Yeah. But if, if they do? Well, they say there should be consequences. We said yesterday to ourselves after the press conference, mm -hmm. what next? Yeah. Yeah, we should put teeth where teeth should be. There should be consequences for misbehavior and misconduct. Okay. Yeah. So there won't be consequences for the last, uh, the, the, the things that were said about President Zuma and so on. There won't be consequences there. Well, uh, you know, we have not said yesterday that we're going to charge anybody. Okay. So it's not uh, my call to make that. Okay. Yeah. It's not a conversation that you're currently having no, right now. No, no. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining us this thank morning. Thank you. Matthew Posa is Treasurer General of the ANC joining us this morning here on Morning Live on SABC2.